Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless us be now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Who wait upon his love. To tell your life today. 
loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. Sit down to eat, 
He will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn he fi and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Greek. 
Because there's something here, there's several things in here that don't make sense. And, and let me give you an example. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good, possess, good pleasure to give you the kingdom. End of sentence. Now, sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. Why do you need a purse if you don't have anything left? Right? Where no thief comes near and no moss destroys, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Those last couple of sentences inform the first two sentences. So I went back to the Greek. The word for sell is polomi. Guess what it means? To be busy, to trade, to barter, as in a peddler. And then the secondary meaning is to sell your possessions. So I often wonder why the translators chose to say sell your possessions instead of be busy about your work. Big difference, isn't it? So what is the possession? If we're going to use this as an allegory, for example, what is the possession? The possession is, go back up. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Oh, that's the possession. What are you supposed to do with it? Give it away. Doesn't that make perfect sense? What do you have when you're a part of the kingdom of God? You can learn to attain peace. It doesn't mean from the moment you decide you want to be a Christian that you suddenly have peace. There's going to be some battle along the way, let's face it. But as you grow in your faith, then you have become to have peace. And when you have peace, that's what you want to share. So what's our possession? It is the peace of knowing that the kingdom of God has been given to the followers of Jesus Christ, and that then we can give that away. We can give that peace away. We can take that possession of the gospel and not just give it to ourselves, but give it away. And the way that we give it away is by living in faith beyond our earthly circumstances. See, again, this story comes back to weighing wealth versus poverty. It's not that easy. It's about what we do with possessions. It's not just about earthly goods. It's about the possessions that we have in ourselves. The gifts, the skills, the talents, the abilities. Those are possessions that we have. And if we don't use those, then we really are wasting what we've been given. We're squandering this gift. But if we use our skills and abilities, now we're helping build the kingdom of God. If that is our purpose, if that's our focus. Now, we know that if indeed we were to sell all of our things and give it to the poor, we'd all be equally poor, and then you're not doing the ministry anymore. So the question is, how do we view possessions? Well, we all like to have things and we all like to have comforts. And what did God want us to be comfortable? I'm not, I'm not falling off to a prosperity gospel. Don't get me wrong. But the diamonds were made for God's people, not devil's crown. You know, we're supposed to have the good things to a point. But some are blessed with more than others. And there's where our inequality of our world seems to really blatantly come out at us. It, that when 1% when of our population, and perhaps less than 1%, controls the majority of wealth, you're going to have a lot of inequality. And it would seem like the middle class that we used to know as a middle class has pretty much disappeared. And we know that none of our kids, well, let me rephrase that, none of my kids, no, I have to rephrase that again. <laughs> One of my kids <laughs> uh, doesn't have anything for retirement and no plan for retirement. And that's kind of what you hear a lot of times about the generation younger than us really has nothing. So they didn't think about it. And so now that's a disaster all by itself. But we come back to this gospel and, and prioritizing the gifts that we have. And let's think about the most valuable gifts we have. The most valuable gifts are the ability to share of ourselves in prayer and in service. To share of ourselves in offering love and affection to those who are unlovable, who don't experience affection. That to pull together those who have been marginalized and discriminated so that we can build this fact that we are one people. We're one people under God. We are the creation of God. And we share this island planet as it races through space. And we all breathe the same air, drink the same water. We all have pretty much the same concerns. Our concerns are that we want to be loved. We want to be nurtured. We want to be cared for. We'd like to be as comfortable as possible. We don't always get what we want. But we are loved and nurtured. What Jesus is really saying is, remember that you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And the stuff that you have can be wonderful blessings. Use it for the kingdom of God. Put those blessings in their right priority. 
So that then, basically, when the end comes, and, and, and there again, I want to be careful I say that. Because I grew up on this win the end, win the end, win the end stuff. And obviously, I'm 59 years old tomorrow, by the way. Um, and it hadn't happened yet. So we have to use our common sense here. But the scripture does indicate that there's an end to the story. The scripture indicates that there's an end to what it calls this current way of being, or some would say the system of things. The kingdom of God is intended to make things right for all of humanity, to end all of the discrimination and marginalization and all of the class structures and all of those things that divide people. That's what the kingdom of God is to end. So why can't we do that now? Why can't we begin now? rather than wait for a later time. It seems like the Christian context has been, well, when Christ comes, when, it, when God comes, it, it'll be all right. But what about us? Is it possible that we could bring the kingdom of God into greater influence in our lives and therefore the lives of those around us? Is it possible that the gifts that we've been given, both material gifts and spiritual, and skills and talents and all these gifts, could be used in better form to help forward the kingdom of God. It happens all the time. It happens when we give to others in need. It happens when you give to charities. When you give up your time to help someone else. It doesn't have to be money. But when you give up your time. And here's one that's really big. When you give up your prayer time. We'll do something here in a little bit. The prayers of the people. Where we're, we are praying together for others. We're reaching out our hands of love through prayer to build up other people. And that is a part of giving away what we possess because we possess the power to pray to God. Everyone does, but not everyone is in tune to it, you see? So our job is to lift others up in prayer. When Jesus says, and here again, when Luke quotes Jesus as saying, sell your possessions and give alms, he's really saying, be busy about your work. Be like a peddler of the gospel. Not selling it, but giving it away. That's what alms are, giving it away. So we're going to give away the peace of God. We're going to get rid of anger and hatred and division. We're going to give away the love that brings people together. That's what the call of the gospel is. Now, to wrap it up, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. This is where it jumps to another entire story. And then it jumps to one more. Here's one that really seems out of place. Know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken in. How does that fit with anything else that came before? It doesn't, but it makes a point all by itself. That we have to be alert to the wiles of the world. We have to be alert to the way that darkness tries to creep in on us through all of these things that are going on around. We can be tempted to be involved in the swirling anger that just seems to be growing and growing and the hatred that comes out of it. Or we could be the peacemakers. We could be tempted to hang on to all of their earthly possessions we can find. And I know people my age that are so deep in debt they will never find their way out of it. But they got a lot of stuff. See, that's the problem. You don't want the stuff to own you. And yet, we all know people in that position. So, be ready. Be ready for what? Be ready for those moments when the door opens in someone else's heart that we can say, God loves you. Oh, no, God's angry with me. No, no, God loves you. Oh, but if you just knew my life. No, God loves you. We have to come back to this constantly because people, why do you think we have such a mess that we have in lives and society today? And you know the mess I'm talking about? It's that no direction, no focus. If you talk to people, you'll hear some people say, I can't find a job to save my life. But then you hear employers go, I can't find an employee to save my life. It's about focus. It's about what we decide with our gifts and skills. It's not about selling possessions. It's about giving away the good so that we can help others. It's not about being focused on the world. It's about being focused on God. When we do that, the other stuff just seems to flow away and it's not that important. So our encouragement is get knee deep in the kingdom of God. Get knee deep in prayer.
continue to reach out for more. I want to know more of the gospel. I want to know more of what God's calling me to do. And when you feel God nudging you to do something, when you feel that Holy Spirit nudging you to do something, do it. Take that move. It's like, it's like the time that something told me to turn right. When I had no idea why I should turn right. And there was a person down there that needed help. How do you know why that happens? God does amazing things through us if we'll be willing. It comes down from willingness and love. And thanks be to God. this time. 
silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For Nicholas and all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of blessed Andrew, Nicholas, Francis, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in the cloud of our divinity. Not what you have done,
Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks to grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Now to him who by the power and work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with us all, all Amen.